now. All right, guys, welcome to our Monday night team call. Um, tonight we're going to be talking about limiting beliefs and just how to overcome them because I think that it's something that a lot of us struggle with in our businesses, no matter what level you're at in your business. I think it's something that we all face every year, every month, maybe even every week. So I thought it would be a fun topic for us to kind of cover tonight. This will be a really quick call. It's going to be one of those calls where you guys are going to be participating with us and kind of giving some ideas from your own experience of what you're facing. So just kind of be prepared for that. Um, before I get into all of the call, though, just some announcements that we have. $20 off of all challenge packs this month in June. So make sure you guys are talking with people about that. I know that Rachel and I both have given our teams some incentive to start talking to people for products outside of just challenge packs. So make sure that you guys are active in those threads. We both have like a ring the bell type of thread going on in our team pages. So make sure you guys are ringing the bell as you go. You guys are talking to people, giving them options, getting them started in some way, meeting them where they are. So next month when Morning Meltdown 100 comes out, we have access to people that are already loving the products, they're already loving Beachbody On Demand, and we can get them upgraded to challenge packs to get them incredible results with a brand new program that's going to totally change the game, I think, for our company, for our, our own fitness, for our lives in general. So just make sure you're getting people intrigued, you're getting them in, and you're getting them good results now so that you can move forward and help them even further when the program comes out. Um, Morning Meltdown 100 launches in two weeks for coaches on July 1st. I know Rachel and I both have sneak peeks going for, for you to add your clients and your coaches to, so make sure you guys are adding people to those. Um, packages will be on sale for coaches July 1st to July 15th. The start date for the program itself will be July 29th. And then July 16th, customers will have access to packages as well. So in those sneak peek groups, mine I just started today, so it'll be th that information will be pushed out as we go. Um, I think Rachel's already has pricing and everything all out, so people can really be in and prepared for that. And then on October 1st, it'll officially be, like launch for Beachbody On Demand clients um, or you know members that don't purchase the VIP early access. Anybody who purchases a challenge pack in June gets a promo code for Morning Meltdown 100 to save money. So make sure you guys are using that as incentive for people that are on the fence about challenge packs and whether or not they should go for that now. They can save money on the bundles that are going to come with Morning Meltdown 100 later. And then the last thing I have is Super Saturday is the last weekend of July. That it's the 26th to the 28th, and it's actually going to be a coach open house. So it's something that's very different. They haven't done this before. And I think it'll be really interesting to see how they format it. But you can bring your, your local clients. You can bring your local prospects and get people interested and get people involved in our community and show them what this is about, why we love it so much. So make sure that you're thinking about that. You're looking for one that might be registered near you or somewhere close by that you can drive to. You guys, like people drive from all over the all over the country to get to different events. So don't feel like because it's a couple hours away that you can't make it. If you want to make your business a priority, make it a girls trip and have a fun weekend and get out there and uh, meet some new people and have a really good time. So those are all the announcements I have. I'm going to shut my door real quick because the boys are like wrestling downstairs and it's distracting me. So pause one second. So overcoming limiting beliefs. Um, so I want to know, for, just to start things out, how many of you guys are where you want to be in your business right now? Raise your hands. Like you're at your goal. You're like, this is perfect. I am exactly where I want to be. Anybody? Nobody. Okay. Kind of what I expected because I know Rachel and I aren't as either. So what I want to talk to you guys tonight about is the belief cycle. So a lot of us, when we start our business, we start our business and we have this idea of all of these goals that our coaches give us. We, we see these rank advancements within our team pages. We see people hitting success club. We see things happening within our businesses and we think, well, I could never do that. Emerald would never be possible for me. Diamond would never be possible for me. I can't help three people a month because I'm just not good enough. I don't have a transformation yet. I don't have this. I don't have that. And we already set that belief in ourselves that we can't do it because it's hard, because it's something that's not going to be easy for us to do. 
So the amount of belief that you have is going to determine the amount of potential that you can tap into. The potential you tap into is going to determine the amount of action that you take. The amount of action you take determines the results you get. And the results you get determine the belief that you have in yourself. And it just keeps going around and around. So if you don't have that initial belief in yourself that you can hit whatever goal is that came to mind when I just asked you if you were at that goal, if you don't believe right now that you can achieve that goal, you'll never get to the potential part or the action or the results. And you're never, you're going to be stuck. So this, this, cycle has to start with us believing that we can actually achieve whatever it is that we want this business to achieve for us. If you want complete financial freedom, you have to believe that Beachbody is the answer for complete financial freedom for your family. If you want to be a top coach in the network, you have to believe that you have the potential to be a top coach in the network. If you want to um, help four or five people a month, you have to believe that you can help four or five people a month. If you don't have that initial belief in it, you're just going to be stuck constantly in your business. So for me, when I started out, I remember I signed up as a discount coach. I was really just focused on my own results because I didn't believe that I was worthy enough to help people. I didn't know anything about fitness. I didn't know anything about Shakeology. I had hated home workouts. I hated working out in general. And my husband didn't believe in me either. So I was really stuck in this mindset of I'm not going to be able to help anybody else because I can't even help myself. But as I started my program, as I kept showing up every day, I started to develop a belief in myself that then sparked that little bit of interest. Like, well, maybe I could hit Emerald. I mean, maybe I can get two people to sign up with me. Maybe I can do this. Maybe I can do that. And so then Emerald wasn't so scary anymore because I started to believe that I actually could achieve it because I had it in my mind that I was worthy of achieving something bigger for my life. So Emerald was that first step for me. So, I mean, really Emerald is two people. It was my husband and one of my best friends. Like Emerald can happen tonight. If you guys are not Emerald already, you guys can go become Emeralds by the end of the night. But for me and for a lot of us, we see it as this big, huge deal and we feel like it's impossible to get there because we don't think that we are leaders. We don't think that we can achieve the, the title of helping somebody else in their own business when we don't even know what we're doing in our own businesses yet. So I just want you guys to really take whatever that goal was of where you want to be in your business and really think about if you believe in yourself or not, or if you have these limiting beliefs that you're constantly telling yourself. So. Most of us probably do have limiting beliefs that we're telling ourselves every day. So I want you guys in the comments to share what some of your limiting beliefs are. I've put some of mine here that I've had in the past, some of the ones that I'm going through currently. And I want you guys to share what some of yours are. So for me, I feel like I'm not a good leader sometimes because I don't have coaches on my team that are rank advancing that crazy, hitting high success club numbers, having all kinds of clients get results. I feel like there's not a lot of people interested sometimes. I feel like sometimes I get stuck in my business and things aren't working. And I feel like it's hard to find working coaches that are going to be as committed as I need them to be. And so Rachel has kind of the same thing. I'm not a good leader. I don't know how to help my coaches succeed. You guys, don't be shy about these. Make sure that you guys are, are open about this. This is part of the call. These, this is more like a... I don't know, I don't want to call it like a workshop, but this is one of those calls where we have to be open and we have to like throw everything out there because you can't overcome the limiting belief if you're not willing to shout out what it is. I'm going to give you guys like another couple minutes. Can't handle the workload of the financial goals that I want to achieve. Okay. I don't think I can be a leader. I'm not good enough. Okay. Yep. Anybody else? There's six people on this call. There's three of us that have shared. Y'all are being shy. Not a good leader. I can't balance the business well. Keep going. Can't get people on board. Can't find coachable people. Can't get people motivated. Can't find people. Hey, these are good. These are all like typical things that I think every coach goes through, whether it's like when you first start out your business or you're at the point that Rachel and I are, all of us have gone through the same kind of thoughts and somehow Rachel and I have overcome some of them and then we've met another one that we've faced and then another one and another one. So I want you guys to be encouraged that first of all, everybody has limiting beliefs, but second of all, you'll overcome those limiting beliefs 
as you have that belief in yourself. So if you want to be able to take action in your business, if you want to be able to go back to this, uh, this slide here, if you want to be able to, uh, to tap into the potential of what your business could offer you. Can I help you? Yes, I can. Oh. <laughs> Distracted. But if you want to tap in, can you stop? Go. Stop. Go. Shut the door. I used to make him fun fact. I used to like lock the door when I would work out so he couldn't watch me work out. I was I was so embarrassed and now I post videos of my workout yeah, every day. Yes I did in the man cave. Awesome. Yeah. Right. Okay, shut the door. Anyways, so all of those limiting beliefs we just had. I'm not a good leader. I can't find people. Nobody believes in this. It's not worth the money. The girl on my page who um, constantly puts down paying for programs rather than just going to the gym. Can't get people to respond to follow-ups. Can't find people. Can't, can't find coachable people. All of those things are beliefs that we're telling ourselves every day. So you guys wake up every day. And you, one of the first things you probably think to yourself is, oh, another day, am I going to actually find anybody? Is anybody really going to believe in this? Is this really affordable for somebody? Is this something that is really going to change my family's life? Am I really helping my coaches? Those are thoughts that we have going through our heads. And when we have those thoughts in our heads, those are the thoughts that we're going to believe through the rest of the day. So imagine if you would turn those thoughts around, you would take those limiting beliefs and instead you would tell yourself, I am a good leader. My business is slowing down, but I have the potential to grow. People are interested in my story and that's what's going to help people change their lives. I have coaches on my team who need my help to believe in themselves so they can work the business more. These are the things that we have to be telling ourselves. So all of you are here tonight, or if you're watching the recording, you're all here because you want more for yourself. You want more out of this business. You wouldn't be here tonight if you didn't. So think about those limiting beliefs that you're, that you're typing out right here and think about how that affects your mindset. 80% of our success is determined by mindset. I think a lot of us get stuck in like, oh, well, I'm not as pretty as the top coach. I don't have as many followers as this person. Her page just looks so much better. Her posts are worded so much better. She's this, I'm not that, this person thinks this of me. What if we just focused on ourselves? What if we just focused on showing up as Brittany, as Caitlin, as Rachel, as everybody that's on this call? Show up as you every single day and be okay with that. Because I'm telling you, when Rachel and I started, it was not beautiful pictures and awesome posts with great words that were so inspiring. It was like, Hey, 21 day fixes on sale. Who wants to join? And it was a picture of me holding the DVDs with a half smile because I was still not confident in myself. And I was hoping to just get somebody to do it with. Me. So you guys have to start from somewhere, but you have to have the belief that you're going to keep going and you're going to grow from that. So I didn't start out this business knowing that I was going to build a whole team of people that were going to believe in something with me. I started this out because I wanted to change my life and I believed that I could change my life with it. So then I changed my life. And then as I changed my life, I was like, well, I think I could probably help some people. And then I started helping people. And then as I started helping people, I was like, well, maybe I can grow a team of people. Like I'm giving people results. Maybe they'll want to be coaches. And then they started to, to have that same process and that same cycle. And that's where everything branched out. It didn't start out with me thinking I was going to retire from banking eventually retire my husband someday if he ever wants to get out of the military. I was going to be staying at home with my three kids. Like I never saw that for myself, you guys. I never would have ever imagined that this would be my life. Debt free. Like all of those things were not things I believed in right away, but I took those little steps. I was like, yeah, I can be an Emerald coach. Yeah, I can be a diamond coach. Yeah, I can hit success club every month. Yeah, I can whatever it was. And I just believed in myself through those things. And no matter what doubts I had in my head, no matter what fears I felt like I were trying to creep in, I just kept pushing past them. And I just kept showing up every day. So I want you guys to ask yourself, what are you doing to believe in yourself? Instead of letting that limiting belief that you just wrote down, 
overpower everything you're doing, what can you do? What actions can you take to start believing in yourself more? So what happens when we have those, those limiting beliefs is we, we just kind of have, you know, we have activities that we start to partake in because of them. So you, you say, I'm stuck. So you just give up on your business. I can't find working coaches. So you stop sharing the coaching opportunity. No one's interested. So you just don't invite anymore. My posts aren't as good as Rachel's, so I'm just not going to post today. Think about those things. What are some of the actions, the activities that you guys are engaging in? What are some of the things that you are doing because of your limiting belief that are limiting your business and the future and the potential that you have in this? Think about that, you guys. For all of you guys who are saying, I'm not a good leader, are you showing up as a leader every day? Or are you telling yourself, I'm not a good leader, so then you're just believing that you're not a good leader and you're moving on? If you don't show yourself that you can do it, you're never going to do it. If you don't believe in yourself that you can do it, you're never going to do it. You're never going to take the action it takes to get to that next step. Go to my notes because now I'm getting off track. So for me, when I start to fall back on my business, like I'm stuck, I start to like, I don't need to work today. I'm all right. Because I don't like feeling like a failure. I don't like feeling like a bad leader. I don't like feeling like people aren't listening to me. I want to be heard because I'm a person. I think all humans have this desire to be heard. And I feel like when my team's not showing up or when my, my posts on social media aren't getting as many likes or comments as I want, or when I'm not hitting success club, or when I had somebody that was going to buy something and then they just backed out last minute and they're completely ghosting me, I feel rejected. And that's really hard for me to face. And I know that a lot of us face that. I know a lot of us are going through feeling like we're not good enough for this business, feeling like we're not worthy of the success that we want to achieve, feeling like we can't do this. But it's only because we're telling ourselves that. The only reason that I'm stuck in my business is because I wake up in the morning and say, I'm stuck. It's my decision to say I'm stuck, or I can say I'm stuck right now. My business is slowed down. What can I do to change it? I'm going to change it. These are the activities I'm going to take to change it. So then what results come from all of that? Frustration in your business, self-sabotage, you decide to give up. Some people are like, oh, I'll just be a discount coach. That's my favorite one. When things get really hard, everybody's like, I'm just going to be a discount coach because I can't do this. You don't even give yourself a chance. Because you never even got to the point where you had the potential because you never gave yourself the belief. So you couldn't even get to the first step of the bit of the, the, the cycle. Now you're just giving up before you even try to have some kind of belief in yourself that if you post on social media every day and show up for 30 days and give a transformation for your followers to see, that maybe you would inspire somebody. That maybe you could show up for 30 days and be completely on track with your nutrition with no cheat. Maybe you could do that if you believed in yourself. So I want to know, what results do you guys want to produce? What kind of things do you guys want to achieve? What are some of your guys' goals? Type them in the chat here. I want my coaches to feel the satisfaction of reaching diamond. Anybody else? Help coaches consistently earn a thousand dollars a month, bring in an extra hundred dollars a month. Goal is helping three people a month. Does anybody feel like it's really hard to, to put those things out there and it was really easy for you to nitpick at what was hard in the business? I want to be a good leader to build a team that believes in this the way that I do. So for me, it's really hard to write down what I want, what I want to achieve. Like I can, I'm, I'm a, I'm a big goal person. I like to have big goals, but to speak it out to somebody, it's really hard. And I'm kind of seeing that here with you guys. And so we started this and everybody was like, I can't get people to respond. Nobody likes me. I can't find people. I can't get people on board. Nobody's coachable. I don't know how to get people motivated. 
it was so easy for us to just snap, 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 snap. We had all these things that we couldn't do. But when it's like, well, what do you want? It's hard. It's hard to put it out there because you feel scared because you're afraid that you don't believe in it or you're afraid that you can't achieve it. You don't believe in, in yourself actually achieving it. So like if I put it out there, I'm accountable. That's scary when I'm struggling to feel confident in my ability to get people on board, even though I love and swear each body. Yeah. So if you just believe in yourself and you focus on your journey and you get yourself the results, and I know Caitlin just said up, up above that she feels like she's going to annoy people with her posts. If you've never been annoyed with my posts, then you're not going to annoy other people's posts. That's, that's bottom line. Like I'm telling you guys, every single day I have people that, that interact on my posts or message me that say thank you. Even if they don't do Beachbody, thanks for the motivation to go to the gym today. Thanks for that quote you put up about, about um, how you can pray for me today or whatever. Like all of these things, like the, 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 the things that I share help people. So don't put that belief on yourself that you're not going to help people, that your post is going to annoy people. If it annoys them, they can unfollow you. They're not, your, they're not your, your followers. They're not the people for you. But the people that do need you need you to be sharing every day. They need you to be willing to give them the information and the guidance that they need in their life that you got from somebody else, from the coach that you joined. Now you get to pay that forward to somebody else. And then they could pay it forward to somebody else and somebody else and somebody else. So I want you guys to not focus on annoying people, not focus on how many people don't sign up with you, not focus on whether or not you're a good leader, not focus on, um, I'm trying to think of all the other, like if you're worthy of the success you want to achieve, what if you just focus on that goal that you just wrote down up here? Bring in an income to pay off debt. Create a team that thrives. Find new people that want to coach. Buy a new home next year. To be a good leader and build, an, build a team the way that, that believes in this the way I do. Help three people a month. Earn a thousand a month. Hundred a month. If we just focused on that and let everything else go, can you guys imagine how unstoppable we would be? If every day you look up, I have up here, inspire others to feel worthy enough to create change. That's my goal. Like, I want other people to know that they can create change in their life through fitness, through their faith, through their marriage, through their parenting, however it might be, whatever your niche market might be. I want people to be inspired to create change in their life, to feel worthy of it, because I didn't feel worthy of it when I started. So what can you do? What message can you give to other people? to help them feel worthy, to help them feel like they can do something. If you're so stuck in your limiting belief for yourself that you don't show up for your business, you're missing out on helping somebody else change their life. You're missing out on your family having their life changed. I want you guys to like think about your kids that might be tucked in bed right now. Your husband who's downstairs doing something, your mom or your dad who are, you know, about to retire but they don't have enough to retire the vacations that you wish you can go on, all of those things that your business could help you do, but is not being done because you're scared of whatever belief you're putting in your head. Think about that. Think about what this business could do for you and why you're not there yet. It's because you've told yourself that you can't do it. Because you've told yourself you're gonna annoy people. You've told yourself that diamond is too hard. That helping three people a month is too hard. I want you guys to be really specific about what it is that you want to create in your life. And I want you guys to go after it and put something near you every day that's going to show you what it is you want to achieve. I don't know if I could share my desktop here. I don't know. Probably not. My desktop has my vision board on it. It has a picture of Tim and I in his uniform. And I want, like, we're walking down the, down the road. I'm going to take a drink. And underneath it, I said, retire him. And I have another picture of my boys. And it says, be present with them every day. And I have another picture that's like a beach vacation. that's like vacation every year. And I have another picture of our dream home that we want to build. And it says, build home, build dream home in cash. And I have these, this reminder, it's on my desktop. So every time I open up my computer, that's what I see. Maybe it's on your phone. On my phone, it's a picture of the boys and I. I don't know if you guys can see. There's messages on there, but the boys are kissing my stomach. I have a baby on the way. Like, 
that's why I'm getting on my phone. I'm not getting on my phone to compare myself to somebody else, which I still do. I'm not perfect, you guys. I don't, I'm not, like, I'm preaching to myself too. But I have those pictures to remind me of why I'm showing up every day. I don't want my husband to deploy for the rest of my kids' lives over and over and over again. I don't want to have to sleep in my bed by myself six to nine months out of the year. I don't want my kids to have to say goodbye to me to go to daycare because I have to work because we can't afford to pay for food. That's what pushes me. I want to take my husband on a vacation every single year, just him and I, because he works his butt off for us. I want to build a dream home that we can live in and look back on our lives and be so grateful for all the hard work we put in. Those are the things that I think about when I have that limiting belief of I'm not a good leader. I'm a great leader. And I have to remind myself of that every day. And you're a great leader too. You're a great coach. You have the potential to achieve whatever it is that you want to achieve when you're willing to let go of the doubt and the fear that you have in your head. So now you guys have what results you want to achieve. So what activities are going to be required for you to achieve those results? Put those in the chat. What are some of the things you guys can be doing? Power hours, one-on-ones, organizing. <laughs> I feel that way too. Power hours. Do you guys feel like you've retracted from power hours because of some of the, the doubts that you guys have been facing, the limiting beliefs? Becoming knowledgeable. Taking the time to watch different trainings and go through new coach trainings. Yeah. Post more about the coach opportunity. These are good. Some of mine, um, I feel like I need to be more vulnerable. I feel like when I'm, the more that I share, like the hard stuff I go through, the more people connect with me. I feel like I need to be more vulnerable. I don't like to put myself out there as much as people think I do. Like I really, I struggle really hard with it. Um, I need to be like, I need to focus on the vitals and I need to be me. I need to be authentic to me and not watch what everybody else is doing and think that that's what's going to work. Invite, stop worrying if my post is as good as the other person's. Exactly, those are perfect. So you know what you guys have to do? You just have to go do it. You literally just have to go out there tomorrow, tonight, and take those action steps. So before you get off the call tonight, I want you guys to think back to those limiting beliefs that you had. And I want you to write down some opposite affirmations for yourself. And every single day, this is something I do every morning. If you follow my stories, I don't really share it on my stories as much. But I have a notebook. And every day I wake up, lately the kids are climbing all over me as I do it. But I have affirmations I write. I'm enough. I'm worthy. I'm a great leader. I'm a great wife. I'm an amazing mom. I inspire people every day. My story matters. I make a difference. I'm capable of success. God has a plan for me. I'm right where God needs me to be. I lead a team of inspiring, life-changing women. I'm not a quitter. I can do all things, and I'm loved. That's how I start my day, in the Word, and then I write, I write down as many as I can think of. I just fill up the page. Instead of focusing on how you don't have a team of people right now that are working the business, you can write down, I lead a team of inspiring life-changing women. I'm excited about the tribe of life-changing women that I'm attracting to my business. I inspire people with my story. I do make a difference. I matter. Whatever those might be for you, my post can change someone's life today. It could be simple, you guys. I'm enough. So many of us don't feel like we're enough because we don't look or talk or act like somebody else does, but you're created to be you. Like if everybody was the same, the world would be really boring. Like you were created to be who you are created to be, not to be who Rachel was created to be or Caitlin or everybody, like you were created for you. So be you and be authentic and be vulnerable and be open and believe in yourself so that you can achieve whatever it is you want to achieve in your life. So your assignment tonight is to write down that goal that you had your one really big goal that you have for yourself in business, what you really think would change yours or your family's life, 
and then I want you to write down like at least 10 affirmations. And whether you write them down every morning or you just look at that list and you say it out loud every day, that doesn't, I don't know, there's science behind both. Say it out loud, write it down. You do what you want. I write mine down because I feel like writing for me like makes me actually process it versus like some people stare at themselves in the mirror and they say it. Like that's, I've tried that. I've had it on my mirror. I always skipped over it. I have an active habit of writing it and it helps me. So write down five, 10, 15 affirmations that you might have for yourself and do that every day and say them to yourself every day based on those things that you didn't believe in yourself for. So you can have some that are in there that don't have anything to do with the business because I do think this is not all about the business, but have things in there as well that explain to, or that help you see that you are a great leader, that remind you that you have the potential to be successful in this business, that you're worthy of the success you want to achieve. Um, but I really want you guys every day, especially if you have kids, I don't know if everybody on the call has kids, I think everybody does, but look at your kid. If you would, like, would you talk to your kids the way that you tell yourself, like, the lies that you were just telling yourself? You're not worthy. Your post doesn't matter. Like, that's annoying. Don't annoy people. I would never tell my kids that. I mean, unless Brian was, like, doing something really annoying. <laughs> but in all reality, I probably would not be like, that's annoying. You should not. I'm going to encourage my kids. And I think all of us here would. So think about that the next time you tell yourself that you can't help people. Look at your kids and ask yourself if you can tell them you'll never make a difference in someone's life. You're not worthy. You'll never be a good leader. You would never say that. So why are we saying it to ourselves? Why is it okay for us to say that to us, but not to our kids? So think about the words that you are letting come into your own mind and the, the doubts and the, the, the limiting beliefs that you're facing and just retract them and put something positive in there. I told one of my clients today, she's having a really hard time with some negative things that she's going through. I was like, pick two or three things for each negative thought you have, write down two or three positives. Two or three things you're grateful for. If you're going through a really crappy time in your life right now, what are two or three things you're grateful for? One bad thing you have in your head, instead of focusing on that, focus on what's good. Make sure I didn't get anything. Um, yeah, it's really easy. That, that was the last thing I have. It's, it's, I wrote down, it's easy to give, 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 and like let everybody else have all this that we have. Rachel and I were talking about this today. It's really easy to give to our husband, to give to our kids, to give to our parents, to our friends, to our teams, to our clients. When are we taking time to receive how awesome we are too? We deserve that. We deserve to be telling ourselves every day what we would tell our clients when they think that they can't eat healthy for a week. We wouldn't tell them, you suck, you can't do it. We would say, no, suck it up, you can do it. You will do it, here's how. And we would tell them to do it. So we have to do that for ourselves too. And then just go out and do it. You have your goal that you're set, that you set. You have your action steps you need to take, your daily vitals, your affirmations, all those things you guys typed out. And then you have your affirmations that you're gonna repeat to yourself every day. That's all you have to do. And it, it might not happen overnight like some other coaches. But we're not looking at the other coaches, right? We're looking at ourselves and where God has us in our businesses. I think we're all pretty faith-based here. God has us right here. I, I've been telling myself that for a long time, you guys. A couple, like I would say probably a couple months now. Because I struggle real hard with like setting the goal of elite for three or four years and missing it every year. But you know what? God has a plan for that for me. I can't quit on this business. If, if this business wasn't meant to be, I wouldn't still be here. Like I wouldn't have a team call to lead. I wouldn't have a team to show up to. I, I, he would have made everything disappear. So you're here right now. You have this business in front of you. You have clients that are helping you. You have a team that believes in you, people that are showing up with you because that's what God has designed for you right now. So be, be thankful for that in the present. Be thankful for where we are. And just strive to move forward day by day following his plan for us. It may not look like the number one coach in the company making millions of dollars right now, but someday it could. And it could be a really cool story to share that it took us 15 years to get there. <laughs> you never know. I mean, that's, it, it doesn't have to be that coach's story. This is our story and we get to write it. He gets to write it for us. And we have to just be faithful and walk in those footsteps. So just walk through that path for him 
for his glory and to help other people change their lives because that's what we're ultimately all here for. So you showed up tonight because you maybe were struggling with doubt and disbelief in yourself. And I hope you leave the call. You have belief and you have excitement for your business again. And you just remember and remind yourself every day that you are worthy and you can do this, but it's up to you. So that's all I got. Uh, I'm going to add on something real quick, if you don't mind. Yeah. So I actually, this goes in line with something that I've experienced this week. And hopefully this encourages you guys that number one, you're normal. Number two, that you can rewrite your story every day. And it's a muscle. I think so often people think that this business, you either get successful or you don't it's all just a muscle like you're working your muscles to lose weight you're working your business muscles to grow a business um, and that takes time figuring out what works for you and so my biggest limiting belief is that um, it all revolves around leadership but I struggle really bad with my onboarding system I don't feel like my onboarding system is good for new coaches I feel like I've just gotten really lucky with the crop of coaches that I have right now. And all that is just lies. But I had a scenario this week that affirmed those lies. And so I onboarded someone who was going to be like, she would talk to all the talk because she was going to be a rock star. She came from Advocare who closed um, and was like, I'm going to bring all my team and all my clients and I'm doing this. And um, you know, she was like in tears and voice memos to me. And I was like, wow, like this is this is great. You know, I, I totally want to help her. She sounds like she has the heart for this. Um, and I onboarded her. I put her in my new coach training and all that stuff. And she goes to me after two days. And within two days, she had jumped ship to a different multi-level marketing company um, where she sees a better business opportunity. And she really just wanted to sell. And in that moment, I internalized my poor leadership that I am a terrible leader and that I am not cut out to onboard new coaches and there's something wrong with me. And it was something that I did. And I literally had to use my mindset muscle <laughs> and say, and I just I had to stop that pattern as soon as it started and say, there's a purpose for this. Rachel, what's the purpose? What is the learning opportunity that you have in this scenario? And yes, I want to work on my onboarding process. Yes, all of that needs work. But that doesn't mean that I'm less than because she was looking for money and that's not who I am as a leader. And so that was God blessing me in that moment. And I know that that she was going to bring an energy to our team that wasn't going to be healthy. And so it took a second for me to like, I had to stop those thoughts because it was sending me into a, I don't want to do anything else this week for work tailspin while my husband was gone and I was tired as heck. And so I just say that, that it's an, a muscle you have to work to overcome all of this and it never stops. So the sooner that you embrace that you're going to have to work through those hard mindset muscle moments, the sooner it will be easier for you to just kind of, it'll be, it'll be more automatic. You'll, you'll catch yourself sooner in those tailspins. Um, and it will become a lot easier to believe in yourself. Um, but failing has never been an option. I'm Brooke is the same way. Failing is not an option. Like we're maybe we're just too hard headed. I don't know, but I've never given myself the thought that I'm going to fail at this. And so just don't give yourself that thought that you are, are even going to, um, and it'll be easier to fly. So just wanted to share that. that it kind of follows exactly what you were talking about. I love that. There's so many scenarios like that. <laughs> it happens every day, honestly. Mm -hmm. Oh, cool. Okay. So we have uh, Brooke. You are amazing as always. I appreciate you. So Brooke and I are going to figure out team call schedule going forward. Um, she's about to have, she, I'm so thankful she didn't pop out a bite baby on this call. <laughs> baby got both. <laughs> I'm on the ball too. I'm like bouncing on the ball. <laughs> like moaning during your team call. Um, so we're going to figure out team calls going forward. I've got a couple guest speakers and we're going to uh, unveil that in the next couple weeks. Um, but until you hear otherwise, we'll plan to be here next week. That's all. Right. Bye guys. Thanks for hopping on.